In today's episode, we will design an inverting amplifier using an OPM. Hi, I'm Art Edang and welcome to this video of Tinker Tinker, where we examine circuits, play with their equations, and make our designs work. Okay, so first, what is an OPM? Well, it is an integrated circuit that has two inputs and one output. We have the inverting input, the non-inverting input, and output. Then we have to provide the voltage sources, positive VCC and negative VE, to power up this device. Next, why is it called an OPM? It is actually a short version of operational amplifier, which means it can do different mathematical operations. By connecting them in certain ways, you can actually make an analog computer. For today, we'll design an inverter which will multiply an input voltage by a negative constant K. To understand how this will operate, let's look into the behavior of an op-amp. The op-amp circuit works according to this formula, where V positive and V negative are indicated in the diagram. There is also capital A, which is known as the voltage gain and is usually a very big number, for example, 100,000. Now watch closely when we rearrange this equation and plug in a typical value of VO, say 1 volt. For practical purposes, we can think of this as almost equal to zero. And so we can say that V positive is equal to V negative. We now have the first important result, which will help us understand how the circuit works. For example, we see that V positive is connected to ground. And so V positive is equal to zero. But since V positive is equal to V negative, we also say that V negative is zero. It's as if the inverting terminal is also connected to ground and so we can call it a virtual ground. The second important fact about the op-amp is that no current enters the inputs. So now we can imagine that an input voltage causes current to flow through R1 and all of it will continue to R2. By using Ohm's law, we can rewrite this in terms of voltage drops as VR1 over R1 equals VR2 over R2. Then we can replace VR1 with V in minus V negative and VR2 with V negative minus VO. We said earlier that V positive is equal to V negative equal to zero. When we use that and do some algebraic manipulations, we get this equation. We can observe that for any voltage that we apply as our input VI, we just have to multiply it by a negative constant that is determined by the values of resistors R1 and R2, and that will give us the value of VO. How will the voltages look like? Let's assume that we have a signal generator that will provide an input sine wave, and then observe the output which is measured across a load resistor. You notice that VO, the blue line, is a bigger version of VI, the one in orange. Also notice that as the input voltage goes up positive, the output VO goes negative. That's what the negative sign for K means to us. Okay, it's time to play with what we just learned. So the challenge now is to design an inverting amplifier that will take in a 500 millivolt signal and produce negative 2 volts at the output. The frequency is 1000 Hz and the load is 2K. We'll assume here that the voltages are peak levels. There are hundreds of op amps available in, in the market, but for today, we will use the TL082 from Texas Instruments. This IC has two op amps inside it, but we will use only one for now. Next, VO reaches positive negative 2 volts, and so our op-amp should be powered with enough headroom. In this case, 
let us choose VCC equals positive 5 volts and VEE equals negative 5 volts. Now we will have to calculate the constant K that will be multiplied to VI so that VO will be 2 volts. That is, K equals VO over VI equals minus 2 divided by 500 millivolts equals negative 4. But since k is equal to negative R2 over R1, we can assign a value to one of the resistors. For example, I use R1 equals 5k, and so R2 equals 20k. The circuit is now complete, and I have assembled it on my solderless breadboard. It's time to test it. Here I will use the analog discovery module, which provides the supply voltages that we need, the signal generator, and the oscilloscopes. The waveforms look like those that I showed earlier, and so it seems that we are on the right track. Now for the measured values. It shows that VI in channel 1 is 0.52285 volts, while VO in channel 2 reaches 2.0346 volts. Let's calculate the measured K. That's VO over VI equals 3.89. Is this good enough? With these results, we can check if the design is accurate. Recall that our target was K equals 4. And so, percent error is equal to target minus measured times 100 divided by target. That gives us 2.72%. Close enough, right? Within 5%. So, there you have it. It's actually a good design of an inverting amplifier. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or suggestions, do type in your comments below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to click the like button. I hope to meet you in the next episode of Thinker Tinker.